Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Wealthy Sailor. Like always, I am John and today we are going to talk about federal income tax. Now I know, I know you're wondering why I want to talk about federal income tax. And the thing is, I don't want to talk about federal income tax. It's kind of complicated and it's even difficult to explain at times. The reason I'm doing it is because somebody said this to me today. Oh yeah, well my work was about to give me a raise, but I refused because then I would have moved up on the tax bracket and I would have ended up paying more money if I got the raise than I would if I didn't get the raise. So I decided not to get the raise. And I just couldn't help but stare at him blankly because my first question was actually, which tax bracket do you fall in? And he's like, oh, I don't know, but I know I'm close. It's like, hmm, okay. And then my immediate thought was, that's not how taxes work. Like not even close to how the tax bracket system in the United States works. So that's what inspired this video. We are gonna go over federal income tax. Note, I am not going to talk about any of the other taxes. I'm not talking about sales. I'm not talking about state. I'm not talking about city or ammo or personal property or inheritance or any of that. I'm literally just talking about federal income tax. So the basics are is that back during FDR's uh, reign of presidency, he passed the federal income tax and it was really to pay for the New Deal and yada, yada, yada. We still have it today. Uh, in the United States, this is achieved by charging a higher percentage to people who make more money. So if you only knew that information, you'd be like, oh, that guy you talked to earlier today was right. But it's not, because I'm going to explain you how the bracket system works. So there are seven different brackets. The first one, it charges 10%, and it's between zero and then $9,875. The second bracket is 12%, and that's $9,876 all the way up to $40,125. The third bracket is at 22%, which I will put here, so 22% should be right about there. So 22%, $40,126 to $85,525, and that's actually where most um, single Americans fall in. The fourth bracket is at 24%, and that's $85,000 thousand five hundred and twenty six dollars all the way up to one hundred and sixty three thousand three hundred dollars and then this is where the jumps get really high it goes from 24 percent to 32 percent if you're making one hundred and sixty three thousand three hundred and one dollars all the way to two hundred and seven thousand uh three hundred and fifty dollars and then the next bracket the sixth one is at 35 percent and that is $207,351 all the way through to uh, $518,400. And then the last bracket is at 37%, and that is if you make $518,401 or more. So I'm gonna put them over here, I think, so that you, know, you guys can see them, because I wanna go over something about these. So if you don't really know how this works, it's very easy for somebody to think that if they fall in the fourth bracket, somewhere around there, fourth bracket, should be in the middle, right about there. And then you go into the fifth bracket, which is an 8% increase, that it's very easy for you to assume that, oh, you'll make less. But that's not how the tax bracket system works. Believe it or not, the 500 or so lawyers that came up with the system were smarter than that. So here's how it works. Let's say you make $50,000 a year. For the first $9,875, bracket one, right here, you get charged 10% on that money first, okay? Then you can just subtract that money from your total income. Then for your next amount of money, so that would be bracket two, you get charged 12% up until you reach $40,125. You only pay the 22% third bracket on whatever exceeds $40,125. So let's say hypothetically, and just for the ease of math, your income is $41,126 then you literally only pay 22% on 
on the $1,000 that is above the maximum for the second bracket. Which means when you look at all this objectively and with the knowledge you have now, there is never a good time to turn down a pay raise. Also, if you have a job that offers overtime, some people will turn it down and be like, oh, I can't afford to move up tax brackets. But the thing is, is that it, even if you do move up the tax bracket, you'll only move up for the money that is within that bracket. For example, if I made over $518,401, I'll be charged that 37%. But I'm also making $518,000, which means to me, I would rather pay 37% on making that much money than not make that much money at all. So that's how tax brackets work. And I've been told by adults, like my parents told me that they have to be careful because they're getting close to the, the top of their tax bracket. Now that you know how tax brackets work, that's one reason that doesn't make sense. But we're about to go into a different reason that doesn't make sense. We're gonna talk about deductions. We all love deductions. And if you um, have a good amount of income, it's good to have as many deductions as possible. So what a deduction is, is it basically subtracts your income. So if you have $10,000 worth of deductions, you can actually take $10,000 off of your earned income and then you only get taxed on the remaining. Some popular deductions are student loan interest, mortgage interest, um, they have the American Opportunity Deduction, which is $2,000 or up to $2,000 for books and stuff like that. 401ks are tax deductible up until $19,500, unless you're 50 years or older, in which case you're allowed a whopping $25,000 a year into your 401k. They mainly do this because if you're 50 years or older and you're trying to put in your 401k, the government would rather you have as much money as they're possible because believe it or not, you not investing in the 401k or the money they would at least make off of you not investing in the 401k does not make up for the loss they're going to have to pay for uh, in medical bills and stuff like that if you're not prepared for the future. The idea is not so much for the older people now, it's for generations later where social security is either not a thing or it's extremely restricted compared to what it is now. So they're trying to get people used to saving for their future now so we can pass down the kids and so forth and so on. And finally, HSA, which is health savings plan. Now, a single person like myself, or at least I'm single on paper because I'm not married yet, I'm only engaged, um, I'm allowed up to $3,550 tax-free into an HSA. Now I can put more in there, I just have to pay taxes on whatever's above that. I normally don't do that, I just max out whatever my normal amount is, and that's plenty it for we we'll are have to talk about HSAs in a different video, but they're a very good thing if you have the ability to get one, definitely get one. Now, if you're not single, if you're married or you have dependents and you want to do an HSA, the total amount you can put in is $6,900 per year tax-free. Now, if you have any of those deductions, those are just the common ones, by the way, you can actually have a whole load of other deductions. But if you have any of those, it's basically subtracting that amount from your income. So here's the interesting thing. Let's say you make $50,000 a year and you put $10,000 of that into your 401k. Now that money is not gone. You obviously are still earning interest on it and it's saved for later. But it also lowered your taxable income to, from fifty dollars to $40,000, which might drop you a bracket. And so you're basically getting that money tax free. So it's really, it's a really good thing to try to use. And that's why so many people who are sort of more financially savvy preach on maxing out 401ks, IRAs, all that stuff. So that's the thing about deductions. Now we're gonna talk about tax credits because they're kind of similar, but they function different ways. A tax credit is the government giving you money for something. So the reason that the government does t tax credits is as a way of incentivizing you for certain behaviors. Um, I, I, if you want to wear the tinfoil hat, hat, you can say, oh, it's a way of government controlling you, but it's it's not. It's just that certain things are better um, to be done, so you have to give people incentives to do it. Like, for example, having kids, generally speaking, is a good thing to do. I know a lot of people look at the United States and think it's overpopulated, but it's not. Um, so the government right now, child tax credit, $2,000 per child for up to three children, or $500 for a non-child dependent. This is why, and I'm not trying to throw anybody under a bus or anything here, 
But that's why some of us know people who have three kids and end up getting like six grand back in their taxes, even though they never actually paid that amount into taxes. It's not because they deducted anything, it's because of a tax credit that goes on top of stuff. So the next tax credit we're gonna talk about is the earned income credit. And basically what it does, it helps people out who don't make a lot of money. So it applies to anybody who makes below $57,000. And then the amount varies based on how much below that number you are. So it goes from anywhere from like $550 to uh, $66.50, depending on how much below the $57,000 threshold you are. So those are deductions and tax credits. Now, if anybody's done their taxes on their own, they probably went with the standardized deduction. The standardized deduction is basically the tax code, they want to simplify it. So they're like, you know what, what's the average amount of deductions people usually have? And they figured it out. And they're like, okay, then instead of people itemizing and doing all this complicated stuff, um, we're just gonna pass this thing that you can just ask for a standardized deduction. So the standardized deduction varies based on your role within the family, whether you're married or single or whatever. So if you're single like I am and you have no dependents, your standardized deduction is $12,400, which for me is almost always better than itemizing. It's just, it just the way it works out for me every year. I just don't have enough deductions that will beat the standardized deduction. Um, if you're married, you're allowed up to $24,800 for standardized deduction. And if you think about it, it makes sense because basically what double two single people. If you file married but separate, you're entitled to $12,400. So again, that's the same as a single person. But here's where it becomes interesting. If you can, if you claim head of household, you're entitled to $18,650. So that's something that you kind of have to uh, figure out on your own. Um, I do my taxes every year with TurboTax. Um, and luckily for me, it's simplified just by them asking me a lot of questions and stuff like that. Um, but as I get like the tax de deductible solar panels and rental properties and stuff like that, it's become a little bit more uh, difficult for me. Um, and I'm not a tax expert. I just want to explain how the tax bracket system worked because there's people who literally do not seem to understand the system. Well, anyway, everybody, I really appreciate you watching the video. If you liked it, if you found it, Informative, please give me a like or subscribe. I actually did a lot of research into this video to make sure I was explaining the information correctly and in a way that is easily understandable. Um, so the, the likes, the subscribes, the bell notifications, that all helps me uh, grow the channel, helps other people see the information because you know I try to put out good information. Um, and also helps me feel more inspired and I just wanna get to work making the next video. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you came out here just a little smarter. Um, stay safe and keep saving.